GitHub had just released their Copilot CLI, and this is a major release that happened three days ago, and right now it's on public preview, and I will show to you today how you can test it out for free and how you can configure it to your own likings. So let's begin by first seeing what we have to do to install this. It's very simple. You will need Node.js with version 22 and over, specifically for the requirements you want to check this thing, which is Node.js version 22 or higher, NPM, and you would probably want to use Linux or Mac OS for this, as the Windows version is experimental. However, I have the Windows version right now on this system, and it seems to work quite fine. So after you install all the prerequisites, which is NPM and Node.js, you want to make sure to run NPM install for Copilot on your terminal. It's pretty pretty simple, it's like one single command. And after that you want to launch the CLI with typing on your terminal copilot. So after that you will want to do slash login and login to your GitHub account. So on the GitHub account it's very important that you have an active copilot subscription. You could even have the simple free version of GitHub Copilot. This allows you only 50 agent modes and chat requests and if you are able to pay per month, you would be able to get like this $10 version that gives you a lot of prompts and queries every single month. So this is a very big release from GitHub and Copilot, which is of course under Microsoft, as they're building their own CLI interface for coding. Now, I'm not a big fan of CLIs. I think it's a lot better to have, you know, integrated chat interfaces like Rucode, GitHub Copilot, inside of all of these systems. But I know a lot of coders, you know, pretty hardcore coders, just love to use the terminal for whatever reason. Like, they're so spoiled. These guys are so spoiled. But yeah, this is the general process of setting up GitHub Copilot locally to your computer and, you know, getting access to it. So it's pretty, pretty simple. You don't have to do a lot of things. And you can also run a very specific command, which is this copilot agent, which allows you to get access to GPT-5 model. Okay, so this is the whole idea of getting access to GPT-5. Otherwise, we are going to be having Cloud for Sonnet as the default model. And this is just one of the things you can do with it. There are so many others like allowing tool usage without manual supervision through flags. There are literally so many things that you can set up on the CLI, but this is pretty much beyond the scope of today's video, which is an introduction video to like, you know, the CLI. So yeah, you should absolutely take a look at the documents if you're a hardcore user and you want deeper things. Maybe that's something that you will find super you know, useful. And before we continue, I just want to let you know that I have this very cheap AI course hosted on Udemy right now. Over 28 students already have taken the course and I would love to see you in it. It's down below in the link in the description. It has over 35 hours of on-demand video that teaches you everything from coding with AI, coding IDEs. It gives you an idea, you know, helps you understand the new models, the new tools. And every single month I am updating this course. So this is pretty much just a one-month payment. It has also a 30 day money back guarantee that you can use if you don't like it, if you don't want it. But if you like this channel and appreciate the work I do, this is my best way to give back to you at a very cheap price. And of course, you support the channel by buying the course. So let's check out this copilot thing, which I think is very interesting. So first of all, when you have slash here, you could see a lot of potential commands that you could use. For example, there is the feedback, the help command. You can set up MCP servers through slash MCP and open up new sessions. Um, so I think this is pretty useful. Now, I don't think it's very important right now that we, you know, work on these things. I really want to see if this model is able to perform, you know, it's not really a model. If this CLI can actually do the work and bring us forward a simple result for a simple query, a coding query. So let's build a Pokemon Pokedex page. Again, this is not something insane. This is a very simple prompt. A lot of people have talked to me about this and what I tell them is pretty simple. I'm not really interested 
in doing the most insane things. Okay, I'm not interested in that. I want to see the models being able to do the simple things. And I think that's one of the most important things. So first of all here, we see that we have a CLI error. For some reason, it cannot see the CLI. So I'm going to stop the query, stop everything. And when you use it specifically on Windows, you want to open it up through a CLI window. If you don't open it up through a CLI window, a parcel window, it's not going to work. So let's run this interactive Pokemon Pokedex web page by running everything inside of PowerShell. And again, it's not able to use it. That's beautiful. This is a beautiful experimental version. This is insane. So for Windows users, what you want to do is run this command to see the version. If this doesn't work for you, you want to do win get search. So it goes ahead and searches for the latest version. And then what you want to do is run this huge command of win get install and it has gotten the new parcel ID and it's going to do the installation for you. So if you're on Windows with the experimental version, you will need a little bit more of a setup. Now, if you're on Linux and Mac OS, like most people should probably be, if you're coding, you don't want to be on Windows. Uh, you know, at least for this frontier stuff, because uh, pretty much everyone builds on top of Mac or Linux, because these are based on American companies, which have pretty much Mac OSs all over the place. Well, you will have to do a little bit of more of a setup. So at least I'm a culprit and I'm a victim of this. I can show it live to you exactly what you have to do to solve these issues. And yeah, after that, you want to restart VS Code if you are in VS Code or reopen your terminal. So it's going to be able to use the new PowerShell. And it starts to run some agentic commands to understand the directory, get a little bit of a sense on what happens on the script. So yes, I'm approving all of the, you know, file iterations. You can do whatever you want, GitHub Copilot, just give me the answers. Create for me a beautiful Pokemon Pokedex. So as I was saying, a lot of people tell me these are simple benchmarks. They don't really test the models. And I'm totally fine with that. Here, I'm just showing you previews of these models. And in all honesty, if a model cannot create simple, amazing results on its own, I really don't think it's going to be solving the more, uh, you know, hard commands. What I have seen is a very clear and obvious correlation in terms of coding. When models can solve the simple stuff and do a good job, they're usually a lot better on the more hard stuff. Like GPT-5 has been doing amazing on this. Cloud4 has done a very good job on this. Quen3, the latest models have been showing significant improvements. As they become more smart, they show very nice results on these kind of queries. So even though I'm testing something simple, just for demonstration, it's quite well correlated with the quality of the model in terms of coding. So even though this is not the hardest thing for the models to solve, it gives us a little bit of a comparison basis where we can see the differences. So we can open this up on the browser. Okay, so let's open up the response. And oh my God, this, this, this response is pretty great. Like I really didn't expect Cloud Sonnet to do such a nice UI. And we can see the stats here. Sadly, I cannot like see the Bulbasaur whole page here. Maybe if I zoom out a little bit, yep. With a zoom out, you can see everything. I think this is the most beautiful Pokemon Pokedex I ever seen like before. Okay, this is insane. This is beautiful. Okay, okay, I, I gotta say this looks very, very nice. Okay, okay. So it also gives us information about how to improve this. So I'm going to get started and say to the model, Think about features, UI improvements for the site, then implement them. Okay, so you know what? What I really love doing with AI is asking AI, okay, as an AI with the knowledge you have about the task and the code, what do you think would be an improvement? What could be a feature? AI has improved so, so much that if you use and when you use a capable model, you could really ask it as a person, as a as a thinker about the things it could do and then ask it to implement them. So it allows 
it will create a theme for dark and light mode. It will have advanced stats comparison. Okay, that's nice with a radar chart. That's very good. Favorite system with local storage. Generation tabs for better organization. Pokemon cries. This is sound effect. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, evolution chain display. Random Pokemon button. Better loading states with skeleton cards. I really have no idea what this is. Infinite scroll or pagination filters okay this this looks amazing if this you know github copilot agent with cloud for sonnet can implement this this would be a pretty incredible result to be completely honest with you but let's see let's see this model working let's see the cli working let's see if it's able to do the code edit and do the job on its own and maybe this gives you some ideas of how you can use ai for your own projects personal projects specifically i wouldn't do this for a work project where you have exact things to do but if you're building stuff you know for yourself and you want to do stuff with yourself well this could be a very nice way to do so so this is the final response from the model and it's loading the Pokemons, which is interesting. Uh, it has random Pokemon selection. It has like this X button. And I really don't know if this is working or if this is bugged out. Okay, so it has an error. It has an error. So let's give this to uh, the model so it fixes the error. But I think this is already interesting. It started to implement a lot of the changes that it promised to us. So let's give it this error. Okay, cancel model, stop running. Let's see, let's see what it can do. So we got a syntax error about our promises. Already starts to work. Yes, do the changes, please. Let's see. Okay, so the model was probably overwhelmed with all of the changes it has to do. One of the things you should always do with the current models that are not the smartest that will ever be is that you want to make sure that you go and implement one or two changes at maximum. Like you don't want to overwhelm the model with changes. And what we can see here is a very beautiful response, very nice animations. This looks pretty, pretty nice. We can toggle light and dark mode. Now we can see the stats here. You can favorite. I don't know what this button is about. Oh, you can like share link and this is a comparison tab. Okay, let's press this button. Okay, everything works. Okay, so we can compare two, two different Pokemons right now. This is incredible. Wow, this is really nice quality. I gotta say, in all honesty, this is pretty insane. We can compare then, I don't know, maybe three of them. Okay, so it's on a new line, which is not the best thing. And there is also no scrolling on this window. But again, given that this model is uh, new, I gotta say, it looks it looks nice. I really like it. And it has a lot of scrolling here, which is nice. Very nice animations. And it can open up a Pokemon on random. Yeah, so it really implemented a lot of stuff and really did a lot of improvements. Like, it has very, very nice animations. This is... Uh, wow, like... I'm a little bit shocked about the quality of Cloud for Sonnet on this query. Didn't really expect that. So let's try one more thing. Let's try one more thing. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to actually open up again GitHub Copilot. Okay. And I'm going to ask it to do something completely different. I'm telling it you are a full stack developer, create a transformer teaching web page. And what I really want to test at this point is how GitHub Copilot is able to change the current code, which is completely relevant, and how it's going to act with all of these changes that it has to do. Because essentially, we changed the entire project to something entirely different. So I really want to see if, you know, through a Gentic tool use, if it's going to be able to handle that. Because it's a very big change. It's not a simple change. What I'm asking it is to shift the entire code base from a Pokemon Pokedex to a teaching web page for transformer models. So this is this is arguably one of the hardest tasks you could give an AI. And let's see how this is going to handle it. Okay, so the model wants to do a very large amount of changes. Okay, let's do it, let's see. So it understands the current context and it will be able to change the context according to what we needed to do. It adds 
500 lines on one place removes another 100. That's pretty much the same thing on the style CSS. Let's see, let's see. I really want to see if the final response is going to be working. Like, you, you know, AI right now is, in my eyes, in college-level performance on pretty much every coding task. And when I say code level level performance, I mean a college a person with coding can do pretty much everything, but it cannot do it efficiently enough, fast enough, but he can do everything. Because a college student has been coding for four years, he has created some kind of stuff, not very large scale projects. He may not have a good understanding of huge code bases, but they can write code, good code, uh, but they do it slowly and they need revisions. But AI doesn't need any of that. It needs just a little bit of electricity and a good GPU and it goes ahead and do that. But it starts to feel like AI is moving towards a graduate or a master student. Actually, I could say for single functions, it's actually production ready code like it could create one function for you do one thing and it does it perfectly and at scale with no issues with security and it's becoming scary guys it's becoming scary okay so one of the first errors that i have ever seen from this model is this one it was not able to replace the correct string on the style success which is interesting so let's see, let's see. I think, you know, the model and the CLI has reached the point where it starts to hallucinate, which is interesting. And what else is very interesting to me is the actual tech behind the CLIs, what different they offer between each other. Or it's just a product release just so they can allow their users to get just a simple CLI working and running. I really don't know. Okay, so in all honesty, actually having the response from Gemini CLI took so much time, like in all honesty. It took so much time, so many agentic tasks. This literally took over 10 minutes to do all of the changes. I really don't know if it's the problem of Cloud for Sonnet. I don't know if it's the CLI, but oh my God, this was absolutely tremendously bad experience. But let's see. Let's see what is what is here. I really like the animation here. Okay, let's go learning path. It shows you the different learning paths. This is very interesting. Very, very interesting. I really, really like it. So this is an interactive demo, let's say. Okay, it's not really that interactive. Oh, okay. And this visualizes attention. This looks very nice. On off mode looks good. And this is to restart the progress. Okay, this is some kind of PyTorch code. I really don't know what goes on here, something went wrong. But I gotta say, this is very, very nice. It's one of the best teaching websites I have seen from a model. Okay, so that looks very, very nice. Very, very correct as information. Okay, this nice timeline. Oh, finally, a model can do this. And then we have a quiz. So I'm just going to do the quiz real quickly. Check answers, All right? And of course the model is correct on the responses and it has hand-on exercises that you can do. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Literally, I think, I think guys, this is the best transformer teaching webpage I have ever seen from an AI model. I don't know how much of this is attributed to Cloud for Sonnet and how much of it is attributed to Gemini CLI, but in all honesty, for it's not actually Gemini CLI, GitHub Copilot CLI. I think GitHub Copilot CLI is doing a very good job using the capabilities of Cloud for Sonnet to bring us very nice responses. I think this is only going to get better from here on forwards. So yeah, I would say this is very, very nice.